deep within the bunker of the Nut and Fancy project in my embarrassingly austere studio, as always, black curtain and all, still got the cheesy taped up Nut and Fancy sign. That is hilarious. Never upgraded that. Still wearing the North Face hat. Yep. Comes questions to Nut and Fancy. Hi guys, thanks for joining me. This will probably be a series of videos where I attempt to answer some questions that I've received from my awesome viewers around the world, TMPers I call them, fans of the Nut and Fancy project. I get these questions through Verilinus, through comments, um, through personal interaction, maybe at SHOT Show, stuff like that. Hopefully I can answer some of yours. Uh, I won't hit on everything, I'm just going to broad stroke some and cover some interesting stuff. I think it's going to give you insight to the Nut and Fancy project, uh, can't speak, Nut and Fancy project, how I run it, what my motivations are, um, and kind of where I think it's come, maybe where it's going to. Okay, I'm going to first start off with a foundation that I might refer to throughout the videos, and that is what I call scarcity of time, and I'm talking about me personally, because it answers a lot of, of things of why I do it the way I do it. Uh, for instance, this cheesy sign behind me. Why don't, why don't you put up something better? Why don't you, you know, have a rotating, you know, image, you know, of stuff you've done in the project? It's time. It takes a lot of time. And I'm going to get to something later in the questions, too, that actually is more important than that. Um, and it kind of talks about the heart and soul of what I perceive as being TMP. Uh, so scarcity of time. I'm holding down jobs, my real jobs. I do YouTube on the side. You know, I don't pay the bills with YouTube. It's kind of its own entity, it's self-supporting, but I don't pay the bills with YouTube. Um, I have a lot going on. You know, I have my, my jobs, I'm a family man, husband, dad, friends to my, or friend to my friends. I try to fit that into, in every spare moment I do, the Nun Fancy project. Okay, so I'll, I'll throw that back. And I'm going to start off first. Hey Nun Fancy, uh, why are you so hard to get a hold of? <laughs> Going back to the foundation, scarcity of time. Okay, the way I best uh, spend, way I feel I can best spend my time in the Net and Fancy project, and I think I've said this before on video, is making videos. I divide that into three phases pre production, production, post production. Pre production can be very lengthy, it can be uh, all the logistics, all the planning the phone calling, the texting, the emailing to schedule an event, just like the Keltec shoot that I just got done with, with the crew. Um, that took a lot, just pre-production, planning it, making it happen, make sure everyone has stuff, gear planning, what guns you're going to bring out, where the, where's the ammunition coming out, you know, where are we going to do it, the creative concept, you know, how do I envision it in my head, what are we going to do, what drill am I going to run, I want to make it interesting, I want to make it, you know, uh, productive in terms of data. And that's a lot in pre-production and then I go into production and that's where the event actually happens in that case it's an event where the folks come out I get the crew out and we're videoing it okay and that's sometimes the funnest part sometimes it's the most miserable part when I'm reviewing something because sometimes I'll sit at the reviewing table I'll do take after take after take it's not happening for me and I don't know why I'm just real picky I mean I've done literally sat at the reviewing table and taken a hundred takes a hundred takes before I got it right. What video was it? What <laughs> review was it? That fancy? I know you guys are asking that. Uh, honestly, I don't remember. It's probably a knife, may have been a gun. The more technically uh, complicated the item is, the more hard, uh, the more hard, that's good grammar, the more difficult it is for me to do my pre-production because I want to get the details right and then also to say it in an entertaining fashion, time efficient fashion is difficult. And then I want it to be fun. If it's not fun, why watch it? But then fancy, you say time efficient, but your videos sometimes run, I don't know, 40 minutes on a review. <laughs> Believe it or not, that is time efficient for what's going on in that review. Okay? Anybody can throw up an item, you know, and show the item and go over the technical details. You know, it's this big, it weighs this much. What? Who cares? I mean, that's important, but that's very bare bones information. Okay? When you see a nothing fancy knife review, you're watching Knife TV, man. It's like you and I are sitting around talking about knives, blades, digging it, love the steel. Hey, how do you envision using this? You know, what's your POU on it? Throw that back and forth. 
It's conversational. It's fun. Hey, do you see this knife? It's like it. It's very cool too. Oh, that's really expensive. This one's you know more value. Check this one out. That's what I do in my review. There's a personality involved in the review. It's not just the bare bones details. To me, that's boring. That's not a video I personally would watch, and that's how I look at myself detached in that review. I go, is that a review that's interesting? You know, did I did I hit it? Did I hit it? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Generally, if I don't, you're not going to see the video, and I can tell you it's happened hundreds of times. I just get away from the reviewing table, and I'm embarrassed uh, with my performance, and I go, that sucked. I'm not posting any of those. But none fancy you should throw those out there. Well, maybe again at a in a subsequent part, I'm going to tell you why I don't do that. That's production. It can be very painful. Post-production is even more painful. Okay, and that's when I actually produce a video. And again, I get to my creative concept. What do I envision for that particular video? Let's take the Keltec shoot, for instance. You know, I've got probably six more videos to edit. Each one will take six hours. Yep. Sitting on my can for six hours in editing pulling in the music, that music didn't work, I'm going to try this music, I'm going to try that fade, what image am I going to you know, pull in, how much of the run and gun do I show, does it have a good pace, and all the director decisions go into post-production. Maybe with a knife review it's going to be bare bones, I love those by the way, they're simple for me, and if I can nail it first cut with no outtakes at all, love it, slam it, maybe throw a fade in on the front and the back end, done, those are pretty quick but with a more complex event where I want more for it and I want a more quality product and it's all coming from here okay again I want to talk more about this it comes from here it's what I personally want creatively out of that product okay and that's and I'm telling you all this to set the stage of where my time's devoted okay and I'm just talking to YouTube forget all the other stuff I said the jobs the family the friends that's always ongoing and you know errands in town all that stuff okay it's just it maxes me out, man. And but that's what is the most durable thing that I can do to serve you guys and gals that watch that and fancy project is produce videos. And that's where I'm at, man. I produce videos. I work my butt off making videos. And I'm not even there, man. Where do you envision going, nothing fancy? <laughs> Dudes, I wish I could tell you. I can't tell you though, because it puts more pressure on me. If I were to throw out where I think where I'm gonna go and where this is headed. You guys would get real excited, and then it would be more pressure on me. Like, well, where? When is that happening? You know, I've done that before. I was like, I'm going to review this. Well, hurry up. Do it. Do it. We're waiting. We're waiting, waiting. And it's just more pressure on me. Okay, so there you go. Um, then back to the question, why are you so hard to get a hold of? There you have it. You know, do I abandon the post-production process? Like right now, this week, I'm in post-production, and I go, I'm going to jump into comments and spend hours in the comments, and video production doesn't go anywhere. Oh, and then I'm back to my regular job, and then I it waits another week before I get out there. You see what I'm saying? It's 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 a decision. I'm weighing everything out on the scale. How can I best serve? Now, occasionally you will see me jump in the comments, and you may be perplexed. You'll go, "Well, that fancy answered this guy's comment, but he didn't answer this one." A lot, a lot of people mistakenly believe that I'm going through every video, looking at all the comments, and I know what's going on. Nothing could be further from the truth. That is not what happens. Ask Verolinus, my awesome and hardworking secretary, who's the other half of the Nen Fancy project. That's not what happens. Is uh, I, it's hit and run, baby. I jump in the comments. I have like three minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll answer this guy. Da da da. Answer that guy, and then I'm gone. You know, I'm running an errand that's related to TNP. I'm back to work. I'm in post production again, pre production again. And I'm not in the comments. That's why you'll see hit and run comments by me on my channel on my channel page as well. You know, maybe I have time for one, two, three. If I'm really lucky, I'll answer six at a time. And also, it's energy. I mean, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time to do what I feel is a quality answer to you guys. And I want to give you a quality answer, but it makes it tough to reach me. <laughs> okay, not fancy. I just want you know, I have a question for you. I want to thank you, and I appreciate it. But it's tough. You know, we get I don't know a thousand. Um, messages, private messages in the YouTube environment a week. Maybe some, maybe less, maybe more. It just depends what's going on in the week. Um, and thousands of comments. I mean, I've got almost 800 videos out now. It's March 2011 when I'm doing this, and that's a lot of comments. You know, for one dude, two people to keep up on. It's just me and Verolinas. I mean, a lot of people look at the Nut and Fancy Project to see how big it is, and they go, "Wow, this is like a corporation." No, it's not. It's a hobby gone crazy. 
that's what it is, you know. Heart and soul of TMP. You know, my secretary, Vera Lyon, is helping me out. That's that's it. It has to be that way. It has to be that way, though. All right, here's another question. And I'm going to throw some critical stuff out there, too. Guys that have said stuff against me. Okay, here comes one. And I'm just paraphrasing it. You know, I've heard it occasionally. They go, <laughs> I'm laughing. They'll say something like, hey, nothing fancy, you are a total prick. Um, you have a huge ego. You have totally changed since you started the Net and Fancy project, I am unsubbing, I'm out of here. Or something like that. Okay, and it doesn't happen a lot, but occasionally I'll see a comment or Vera Linus will, will tell me this person said this. All right, a um, couple things to say on that. First up, generally, and I'm going to try to be serious on this, but generally when someone says that, they go, well, you have a huge ego, you know, you're arrogant. They're usually an individual who has tried to exercise control over the Net and Fancy project in it, and they have failed. Okay, in other words, they want me to say or do certain things, and I refuse to do or say the things they would like. Okay, they would love to exercise influence over the Net and Fancy project. Hey, promote my channel. Hey, say this. Hey, become part of this pro you know, this group. Hey, do this. Hey, he's not responding. Probably because I never saw it in the first place, getting back to scarcity of time. It's hilarious. People think I'm online all the time. I'm online very little. It's just uploading, you know, answering comments. Once in a while I'm there, you know, uh, goofing around, but generally I'm working to TMP. People think I'm surfing online all the time. I'm not. I'm usually absent. But they assume that I saw that and then they're like, well, heck, you didn't do that. Yeah, that guy's a prick. Arrogant prick. And so they go on some crusade against Nut and Fancy. You know, might produce some hate videos, hate comments, and on they go telling the world. What a prick I am. <laughs> okay, so that, know that, that people like that. How about ego? Nothing fancy, uh, you're, you have a huge ego. All right? Well, I will admit that there is an ego involved because I think all men have egos. You don't? Come on. You're lying if you say you don't. Yes, of course I have an ego. What does the ego do for the Nothing Fancy Project? It produces excellence as I, as I strive to reach that excellence. I'm not happy with mediocrity. Okay, if I do a run in the sledgehammer, I do poorly. I want to do better. You know, I want to do better. I want to represent the gun well. I want to get points. Yeah, I want to be competitive. You know, I want that. I want the video to be entertaining. I want it to be something that I go back a year later and I personally watch it and I'm moved by it. Either I'm motivated to go out and do a backpack trip when I watch Where the Air is Thin you know, the adventures of summer snow, and yes, they do have that effect on me even a year later. You know, I go out and watch the Caltech videos a year later and I'm laughing my head off. Why? Because I have, whatever you want to term it, a, a desire for excellence. Okay, is that egotistical? Call it what you want. You know, I, I think every man, if they're truly honest, will be you know, driven by that, that you want, you don't want to fail, you want excellence, okay? The question is, is your ego in check? And I will tell you, it's definitely in check, okay? I'm not out there acting like I'm all that, oh, I'm so awesome, and sometimes guys roll in the video and they go, well, nothing fancy, you know, you're acting like you're so cool. Honestly, and I'm being dead serious, is you're, you're probably misinterpreting the video. And again, the video is kind of like a, a straw that you're looking through. You can't see the whole picture. You know, you can't see the vibe that was going on. You don't know. I can't show everything. You're looking through a straw. I know I do the best I can to represent it, but sometimes there's misinterpret, uh, misinterpreting going on. People think I'm coming across a certain way when I'm not. You know, I want the Nut and Fancy Project to have a certain look. Okay, and honestly, I don't care if I'm in, actually, uh, I'm going to get back to this, but I don't care if I'm in front of the co camera, you know, one of my crew members is in front of the camera, I would just want the project to look a certain way, you know, it doesn't mean I'm not showing mistakes, it doesn't mean I'm not showing silly stuff, you know, just, uh, you know, absurd stuff, I show plenty of that, but I do want it to have a feel, getting back to my pre-production creative design for that video. You know, and what I was going to say is, you know, early on, I, I never anticipated of me coming out in front of the camera. I always wanted to just show my hands, 
show other people. I would have been content doing that. Just be a director behind the camera. The problem with that is, is again, scarcity of time. You know, I cannot, you know, let's say I'm going to go do a shoot and I don't want to be in front of the camera. I have to go get another individual, schedule that individual. They probably have a job. Got to deconflict, uh, excuse me, deconflict his job with my job. You know, good luck making that work out. Then we go to the shoot, and then I have to describe to him, hey, this is the shot I'm looking for. This is how I want you to hold it. You know, do this and do that. And then it becomes embarrassing because then I'm like, you know, dictating every little thing to that person. I don't want to do that. Instead, it's just better for me to throw the gear on, take a shot, done. It's more time efficient. You know, and, you know, oh, well, you know, you try to act all cool. No, I don't. All I'm trying to do is represent the products, you know, have a you know, a good look. I don't want to put something goofy up there. You know, why don't you ever smile in your pictures? Actually, every time I smile, not every time, but usually when I smile, I look like a goof. I'm embarrassed of the picture. That's why. Okay? Didn't know that, did you? So that's why I'm usually straight faced when you see the picture. Not that I'm trying to act all cool, just that. Huge ego? No. Ego? Yeah. Everybody's got an ego. Be honest question is, is it in check? Is it grounded in reality? Will you, and here's a good way to know, do you admit failure? Okay, are you above that? I'm not above it. I've done it on camera many times. I sucked at this. You know, that sucked. My shot sucked. You know, I was horrible at this. Doesn't mean I'm slamming myself, my self-esteem. What it means is I'm recommitting myself. I acknowledge failure and I'm going to get better. Okay, driving back the ego. Oh, and here's another thing. TMPers, you should be glad that I do have that ego because it's why the project exists. Mm -hmm. If you knew all the criticisms I've received through the years, harsh criticisms, death threats, hate of all sorts and descriptions out there, you know, a, a guy that didn't have that would have just <laughs> ended up in the corner sucking his thumb, you know? saying, I give up, I can't take this, oh my gosh, I'm a failure, they think this of me, oh my gosh. I don't care, man. I'm, I'm what I call, and I love other guys that I can run into that are like this, self-actualized. In other words, you know who you are in life, okay, and you know, my self-esteem is not tied to the camera, it's not tied to the audience, it's not. That's one reason TMP is successful is that I know who I am, I don't change, I'm the same dude I was three years ago, I still laugh, kid around, give you the same quality information. As I've said on my channel page, all I'm trying to do is improve the quality of my product as time goes by. I want to make it funner, I want to make it, you know, better. Something that I'm, I'm personally more proud of as years go by. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay, but, you know, to withstand that criticism, I know a lot of people in the YouTube environment, which is very harsh and unforgiving, it's brutal that have just rolled up their tents and packed it in. I'm done. You know, I'm tired of all the hate and dissension. I just do my own thing, man. Truck it on, man. Um, so luckily, you know, I know who I am, and I'm not saying that in an arrogant way. I'm just saying, you know, criticism. Hey, nothing fancy. You're this. You're that. Whatever. I gotta go out and shoot. I gotta go backpacking. Nothing fancy. I hate you. I th I think you suck. Have fun with your life, man. I'm up in the mountains with my son. And I'm up in the mountains with Crockett 20, having a good time. You know, have good have a good time with your life, dedicating it to hate in mom's basement, you know, Cheetos and porn. Whatever you're doing, I'm sure it's working for you. That's just not the way I roll. Positivity, baby. That's why TNP rocks. Okay? So that's that question right there. Hey, nothing fancy. How do you and Verilinus work blocking? How do you block people? Why do you block people? I'll throw this out there. Uh, well, first, the short and simple answer is we block people for whatever we want, okay? Okay, it's our project. There is no entitlement to the Nut and Fancy project. You know, I'm entitled to comment. No, you're not. It's my project. If I feel like you're being a dick, you're going to get blocked, okay? There's an answer for you. If you're being a dick, what's the dick? Well, if he's grandstanding. If he's grandstanding and like does you know, not dozens, like five comments where the guy's like going off and he's making it his own personal soapbox. I click on his link, I see he's not a subscriber. Generally I'll you know, I'll be lenient with subscribers. You know. The whim hits me, I'll block you. No apologies. You know, 
That's just the way it is. Verilinus will do the same thing. Now that being said, that's a short answer. The real answer is we block people very little. Very little. It's seldom we block people. Um, and it's definitely not for disagreements. There's thousands of comments where guys have disagreed with me personally, with my review, what I've said. And they're still friends. And, they, and TMPers who've been following the project, they know how to do it. They know how to respectfully say, hey, cool thing. You know, I just don't know if this is the right thing. Fuck on, man. We don't care. But when vulgarity is involved, profanity, um, disrespect is involved, you know, to a level which is just hateful, then you're probably subject to a block. You know, and then then they go to make their ghost accounts because they just can't leave TMP alone. They're possessed with TMP. You would think if someone's blocked and they actually hate that project, that channel page in YouTube, they would just go on. They go, eh, whatever. I got a ten thousand more channels. To go check out. No, it's not the way it works. Huh? Maybe that's an ego-driven personality. You know, they're back and they got their ghost accounts. Fortunately, the audience is uh, very loyal in the Nut and Fancy project. And it becomes almost self-policing. So someone, one of these guys, one of these clowns shows up in the comments and they start going off. You know, I, there's going to be like 100 TMPers in that video commentary that are going to jump on that guy. And, you know, Verilinus, myself, we don't have to do anything. It's a culture, you know, and they'll, they'll generally say and do the things we'd want to say. Hey, dude, don't, you know, don't say that. You're being myopic. You're being profane. You, you're incorrect, you didn't know that he addressed that in that video, you know, and they're just going off. Some guys just jump, you know, midstream in the project, they don't know anything about all the videos I've done, they haven't watched it, they come to this one video and they just start going off. And honestly, they get owned by TM Peers. TM Peers just rail on them, and I'm laughing. When I roll, Vera Linus will say, go look at this exchange, and I'll look at it, and these guys just, you know, it's self-policing. Well, nothing fancy, you should tell those guys to back off. No, I shouldn't. It's generally, like I said, they're saying and doing what we would be doing. They're, they're freeing me up for that production time. Pre-production, production, post-production. Post so I'm out producing the videos. They're taking care of business. That's what they do. But again, we rarely block people. And if Verilinus Fairline, Fairline blocks someone from TMP, I fully support her. She did it for a good reason. You know, uh, you know do we make mistakes sometimes? Eh, probably we do. We make mistakes that we accidentally block someone. Maybe we misunderstood where that person's come from. And guess what? If that person contacts us, they're cool about it, they're respectful, they recommit, they're unblocked. We've had, we have a lot of people like that, that they were enemies to the Nut and Fancy Project. To me personally, they approached Verilinus and said, hey, listen, uh, new leaf in life. I don't know why I was wasting all my energy and time doing that. Please, can I please be part of TNP again? What's our answer? You bet. Come on back. We're going to be watching you, though. You're on probation. <laughs> and generally, those people are great. You know, We don't hold grudges. We don't devote energies to holding grudges. You know, said something against TMP, me personally. You apologize. Come on back, man. Let's have a great time. I, I recommend you do, you do the same thing in life. Don't hold grudges. It's just a waste of energy. Be positive in life. You know, devote your time and energies to things that matter, that 20 years down the road, you'll look back and go, man, I'm so glad I spent my energies doing that. I'm glad I spent my time doing that. Instead of looking back and go, oh my gosh, you know, I was an idiot. I wasted a lot of time in hate. Where did it get me? Nowhere. It doesn't get you anywhere. All right. And along with that comment deletion, when do you delete comments? Well, I'll tell you from my personal experience, admitting fault accidentally I've done it before and I've tried to e you know text or, uh, not text but email the guy and say I'm sorry like you know I'm jumping in doing a flyby in the comments and then sometimes my response will lock up and then I, I hit cancel but instead I hit the garbage can and it deletes that dude's comment I've done that like uh, not tons five times it, it's it's embarrassing but you know sometimes it's by accident sometimes we will delete comments again if they fall into that category of the guy just going off you know, the profanity, just being a total dick. You know, we reserve the right. It's pretty rare that we do it. Sometimes if we feel you're being disrespectful to the person on camera, like, for instance, at SHOT Show, you're saying something against uh, that real pretty girl, Shayna, what was her name? We'll delete those. Don't, you know, don't be disrespectful. Because I don't want those individuals um, coming in the Nut and Fancy Project, watching that video, and then seeing your comment that is disrespectful, uh, it's just not tolerated in the Nut Fancy Project. This is professional. 
says it right on my logo. This is professional. It's something where the manufacturers can come. They, they know that they're going to be handled, you know, in a cool way, a fair way, you know. And if we see comments that don't do that, then, you know, we reserve the right to nuke them. It doesn't happen very often. And again, I support Verilinus 100% if she does it, but it's a rare thing. All right, uh, nothing fancy. When are you going to make a website? Uh, again, back to time scarcity. If I make a website, then I have to um, administrate the website personally. Who else do I have to do it? Mrs. Nothing Fancy? You know, she's busy with her contribution is she's TMP merchandising person, which, by the way, I know i got to make a new T-shirt and all that. Um, and so she's busy, busy with that being a mom, you know, and I, she doesn't want the job is what I'm saying. So we either have a maxed out and fancy or a maxed out Verilinus. And by the way, Veri is extremely maxed out. She goes over comments, um, you know, video approvals. Um, she's, she's putting in a good six hours a day with nothing fancy projects. She needs her own secretary. So what do I get, who do I give that to? Do I hire someone? You know, make a website? Ah, eh, then that's, I mean, the business aspect of TMP is so big now as far as, just taking care of it, records, all this. It's a lot, and it, it weighs me down. So website, yes, one day. Depends on what YouTube does, too. If YouTube, you know, all of a sudden, you know, some dark, overcast day goes, you know what, no more gun videos. Guess what, net and fancy website. Yep, it'd take me probably a year to bring all my videos over, host them on my own stuff, but we'll be there. So, so far so good in YouTube, Google. Keeping my fingers crossed. Where am I at time-wise? And we're doing okay. Uh, and then some guys say, well, you need to make a forum, too. Well, no way, dude. Every for every video is its own forum on the subject. Perfect. You know, the comments are their own forums. They're just as good. You know, make a nut and fancy forum, then have to go in there, and, you know, then all the forum stuff develops, you know, the hate, the group thing, the gatekeeping. I don't want that. Don't want it. All right. You guys might like this. Uh, hey, nothing fancy. When are you going to TV? And this will probably be the the last uh, question on this part one. Uh, when am I going to TV? Probably never. How's that for an answer? Uh, whoa, nothing fancy. You kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you because my motive is not to use YouTube as a springboard and jump into other media, which a lot of YouTubers, big YouTubers, are wanting. You know, they, they want to showcase their talent. I'm talking about singers, you know, maybe music, musicians, comedians. And they want to get picked up by Hollywood. That's never been my intent. I don't want it. To me, YouTube is a destination. Okay, it offers me absolute freedom and independence to do and say whatever I want. That I can control my product, which probably I would not be able to do in the television environment. The producers, the directors would say, you know what? Don't fart on camera or whatever you know don't say that you know we can't really show that product because they are, they're not a paid sponsor you know I don't have any of those constraints in the YouTube environment this is a new media baby just like I said in high skies around the campfire the new media is huge okay it is threatening traditional media television radio print media and I'll tell you those sources don't like it because it threatens their power structure it threatens their income can't really blame them, but the new media is powerful that you can get your own audience. If you have a message that connects to other people, that moves them, okay, that motivates them, that's real, that's the new media. And more importantly, it's well, not more importantly, but just as important, it's durable. Okay, new media is durable. I do a video, let's say the Keltec shoot, you know, one year from now, two, three years from now, you know, crossing my fingers that YouTube stays the way it is now, that guys can go in there and, and Google. They can go in the Google line, search Caltech, brrr, here come the videos. They can experience them just like they when they came out. What happens to a television show? It's going to be on that website. Let's say it's a discovery show. You know, it's going to be on the Discovery Channel. You could probably search it out. You know. It's probably there, but it I don't know, it's just not the same. It's not as accessible in my opinion. It's not as, as, as durable. And I tell my manufacturers this, and they, a lot of manufacturers are slow to catch on. Some really get it. Arsenal gets it because they've seen what has happened in the Net Fancy project, and they understand new media now. They get it. I'm just using them as, a, as an example. They understand, like, this is big. This is big exposure. 
Okay, so my, my goal is not to go to television. Now, if someone approached me and said, hey, you know, we'll do the Nut and Fancy show, you have complete creative control. Yeah. I wouldn't say I would totally jump it. I wouldn't say, yeah, 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 that's what I want. Because I'm not looking to throw myself in the camera and become some star. You know, some guys would go, what? I'm, I'm not. All I'm trying to do is just move my vision forward, okay? And I have in my mind where I want TNP to go. Little by little, we get there, you know, year after year. Um, and it's really high speed when it's just one dude making the decisions. It's not a committee. That's another reason, big reason TMP has stayed on track. It's not a committee. You know, and getting back to the ego question, well, we want to control TMP. We think you should do this. We think you should do that. And I go, no, no, and no. That's not where we're going in TMP. I'm keeping it on track. You know, we do not sell out in TMP. We're not going to do this gratuitous things that you think would get, get me more audience numbers or view numbers. I don't care. Let it be naturally or let it happen naturally. You know, if the views are good, then it means great. We got, I have a good product. If they're not, okay, great. I, I personally still liked it, but I don't go changing. You know, I don't go changing course. I don't put my thumb to the wind and go, oh, where am I going to be more popular? You know, what do I say to be more popular? How do I make a video that will make me more popular? I don't care. Honestly, I do not care. What I care is I want that product, for me personally, to be good. That I can be proud of it, whatever that product is. Okay, so television, probably not. And yes, I have had offers. <clears throat> Discovery Channel contacted me and has several times and goes, hey, we want you... Well, we want to consider you. It wasn't like a sure thing. They weren't saying, oh, you're a shoe in They wanted me to do the dual survivor show, whatever that is. <coughs> Cody got it instead. Rock on, Cody. Great dude. Great dude. Um, and he got it. Rock on. Uh, more power to you. He was in YouTube. But, yeah, they're looking at me for that. And I, I said, thank you, but no thank you. Uh, they contacted me a second time. I never got in contact with them again. Because, honestly, I just wasn't interested. And I told him, I was like, I'm really not that hardcore of, of a survivor anyhow. I don't want to be eating beetles and worms out there and having diarrhea for a week. I just, I'm not. I can take care of myself in the woods, but I don't really think of myself as some hardcore survivalist. You know, those guys are a lot better than me. So, could I step up and do it? Yeah, I could step up and do it. But i got to be motivated, and it takes me away from my real, you know, my real pursuit, my joy, and that's TNP. Okay. Oh, and then uh, Top Shot. Are you going to do Top Shot? Uh, yeah, Top Shot um, contacted me too, Mr. Franklin. I think that was his name. I'll tell you his first name. Interested. Yeah, they wanted me for the current season, second season, and I was not the only one invited. I'm sure they're probably throwing invites to other personalities out there. And I wasn't interested. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Are you insane? Again, we get back to the whole purpose of why I'm doing this. Where's my time at? Um, I'm not looking to self-promote myself. I'm not looking to springboard into television. I'm happy doing what I'm doing at the pace I'm doing it. Um, spe speaking specifically a top shot, uh, here's, here's my main reasons. One is I don't consider myself like a pro shooter. What? Nothing fancy? I mean, you shoot so good. Uh, I shoot okay. Maybe I'm a little bit above medium level, but I've always kind of considered myself a medium level shooter. I've competed, you know, military competitions before, but you know, I just don't think I'm that great. You know, when the, when I have to shoot really, really fast, my shots kind of do this. You know, there's a truth dart for you. It just is. I don't, I don't know if I'm as good as those guys. I, I'm not lying. I'm just throwing that out there. And also, I'd have to leave my real employment that really pe pays the bills. And I think you leave it for like 30 days. That creates a lot of complications for me. You know, my uh, benefits and all that stuff come into play. Uh, could I do it? Yeah, maybe I could do it. I could probably work it out. Didn't really want to do it, to be honest with you. Uh, and then I got to go live for at least a month in a house full of dudes. Okay, why do they do that? Because they're shoving everybody in cramped quarters to create drama. And if there's drama, i.e. conflict between individuals, they get views. Okay, and it becomes a popular show. They make more advertising money. It's all about money, right? Excuse me. I don't. I don't actually fault them for that at all. But that's the reality. That's why all those reality shows put all those people together. They have to live together. I don't want to do that. That's just that would suck. I did that in college. Like I want to go back and live with a bunch of dudes for a month. Dude, I've done that in the military in a tent for months on end, and it sucks. 
living in a tent, house, tent, whatever, still the same. No, not motivated. And also, and I know this for a fact, is if you sign on with Top Shot, they want to exercise control over your other media sources. You didn't know that, did you? You sign a contract with them and they're like, oh, nothing fancy. Well, we've got a big project over there. Well, guess what? We're going to tell you what you can say and do in that project since you're contracted with us. And that in and of itself is a deal killer for me. No, you're not. You're not exercising any control over TMP. It just ain't going to happen. You know, so those are the reasons. Now, will it happen in the future? Will things change? I don't know, maybe. But I'm not super motivated to do it. You know, shooting drills, heck, I do those now. You know, TMP is a destination. I think of it as its own channel. You know, more and more on, on par with stuff you see on television. You know, I'm not saying that, oh, look at us, look how cool we are. I'm just saying in terms of durability, you know, in terms of content, uh, it's kind of like that. In view numbers, more and more so. You know, and why do I need television? New media rocks. It rocks. How much time do I got? Ah, eh, maybe one more question. Uh, nothing fancy. I love your channel. It's awesome. Uh, man, I really, 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 really love it. But how do I make my own channel grow? Will you promote my own channel? Well, if you want your channel to grow, first off, have a vision. And don't copy everything I'm doing. Okay? There's so many copycats of the Nothing Fancy project. And, you know, that's cool. But, I mean, there's so other, so many other ways that you can make a successful channel. But you don't do it by saying, oh, I really want to be popular. What do I want? I really want to be popular. I want lots of views. I want to become a partner. To me, that's disaster. It just won't happen. What are you normally interested in? What's your passion in life? Do you have a message, again, that will connect to people? Is it positive? That's a big thing, by the way. If your message is neg negativity, you, know, you have the camera going, you're cussing, you're hating on people, that won't attract a big audience. You may have a little group of core followers, but it's doomed to failure. Negativity doesn't inspire people. It chases them off. You know, why would I come home from my work, you know, where I, I'm just saying arbitrarily, I'm some dude, and I come home from work where I've had loads of negativity in my job, and then I sit down at the computer and I click on a video that also has loads of negativity. Why? Wouldn't I want to watch something fun and inspiring and informational that can help me in my life that's fun and entertaining? So how do you make a successful channel? Find out what's fun and entertaining. And it doesn't have to be guns, knives, and tactical gear, the formula that I started. It could be whatever. You know, there's all kinds of interesting channels on there, on, you know, on YouTube. Um, I'll tell you this, but you've got to start off right, and that is your intent has to be pure. You know, that you, you just dig the stuff you talk about. And then you'll generate your own following. You know, personality becomes a... A part of it. Um, I'll tell you something I was going to allude to this, where's my time, is it's not necessarily production quality either. Well, you know, I'm going to really do, you know, really fancy dancy production quality. I'm going to have a snazzy intro with cool music and graphics flying left and right. And you know what? When I'm watching a video, you know, when the times that I can get down and I watch a video, like a music video, those are the ones I really like on YouTube, by the way. Um, or whatever, and I, or once in a while I'll click on a review video just to see, you know, see what's going on. I see that, I'm like, it wears me out. You know, I, it's just too much. I don't want to see that, all that crap. Just get to the thing, you know, you know, the meat and potatoes. And guys are probably saying, hey, nothing fancy, that's how we feel. Just do more old school stuff. <laughs> I do, depending on what the item is. But again, it gets back to my vision of what it is for the video. You know, what's my vision for the video? Is it... You know, the Keltec shoot, do I just open it up with no music, just a graphic? No, I wanted more than that. I wanted more than that. I wanted a cooler feel. I wanted to represent, I, I felt like, um, actually, in some ways, I wanted to really support Keltec with a good product. That they, too, could be happy that they participated. It doesn't dictate what I'm going to say about their stuff, but still, I want a cool product. A video product, I'm talking um, talking about production value, though, I will tell you this: just like a movie, you ever gone to a movie where the special effects are rocking, but the storyline sucks? It blows, and you walk out and go, "Man, that movie movie sucked." Yeah, you got to have a storyline. You got to have heart and soul in your video. 
you know, this one I'm not even going to put music to. I'm just going to throw it out there. Throw it out there. You know, do you do you have a message that will connect to people? If you do, then you'll probably attract an audience. If you don't, you won't. Special effects, production values, and that gets to, hey, what kind of camera, what type of movie software to use? It doesn't matter. You know, heck, I started the Net Fancy Project with the cheesiest Sanyo camera ever. That's all those videos, the first 150 videos, horrible video quality. And they, you know, they got views. They, they put me where I'm at now. It's not your video, it's not your camera. I mean, yeah, use a nice camera if you can. It's not your video editing software. It's the message you have in your video. Okay? And that will connect or don't connect. Part one, questions to nothing fancy. I'm out of time. Part two coming up shortly. This is Net and Fancy. Thanking you for watching this video. Thanking you for being a part of the Net and Fancy project. See you in part two.